Hello everyone, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a while I made any YouTube videos and posted online. So finally now that we I got some time to make a video. So today today's topic I will be covering um, MPLS connectivity from business partner to your data centers or campus sites. As the um, the title um, the itself suggests um, we're going to discuss how we would uh, we can connect our tier point our, our data center right from our data center to our business partner with external networks right business partner external network so, so the purpose you would be connected to them maybe they have some users sitting in this locations they want to connect to your uh, infrastructure for some um, project some work related uh, reasons right or maybe uh, your business partner uh, is hosting an app application, right? Um, and uh, the user sitting in your uh, company behind your internal network in campus offices here and here wants to connect to external um, external network business partner one network to use that application, right? Uh, there could be so many reasons why you want to connect, but um, the whole purpose of this discussion is to go over how you can um, achieve this right so there are multiple steps involved in it um, <clears throat> based on my experience having working on similar projects um, connected related from multiple very very large corporations so um so i'm just showing you a simple example um so the step one would be you work with this isp your um, internet service provider it could be anyone like at and it could be level three nowadays they are called as um, uh, CenturyLink or you could work with Spectrum, Verizon, you name it, right? So you you, you call your ISP, basically someone um, in your company work with the ISP, right? They can't handle the accounts. They work with them. They they purchase a new one circuit from them, right? Um, so after 15, 20 days, um, the at and would deliver you a circuit somewhere in your data center that's called the handoff here and uh, it's very similar to like a patch panel so they will provide the connectivity to here to a pop or rad device right from there it's your responsibility to um, run the cable and cross connect to your external switch or router whatever it is uh, so for for this conversation let's talk we are connecting um, to this isp on ethernet port 25 right so this is a physical connector. Once you plug the cable, the, the wire, it could be fiber or it could be copper. Boom, um, and the port comes up. You see a green LED on your port. That means everything is okay. Everything is working fine as we are just talking about physical connectivity. If this green LED doesn't come on, if the port still um, remains shut, do a shut, no shut on your port, that should resolve. Or if still doesn't take care, um, check the... Uh, ask your isp what configuration have they have on their interface on their uh, this edge router right um service provider edge router um settings like um duplex full duplex or auto duplex or uh, auto negation on and off that that is very important right if they have auto negation off here then you cannot leave it on here you have to match exactly your you guys might have to be on the same page basically otherwise the port doesn't come up if it still doesn't work um you probably might have to uh, do a rollover on your fiber if you fix a fiber connection on this side or this side and that would take care of the issue it still doesn't work then you have to give a call and see what's the problem with isp anyway so moving forward uh, <clears throat> so once the uh, physical connectivity is up your layer 2 is up you work with ISP, you schedule a meeting with the ISP network engineer um, and you provide this IP or they will provide you the IP address and BGP details. So for for sake of this video, the ISP BGP uh, AS number would be 65,000 and your AS number would be 2,000. Those are just examples, right? So you share um, your details, right? Hey, my BGP number is two thousand. AS number is two thousand. And if you are providing the IP address to ISP, you basically make a subnet and tell them you use dot two and I use dot one. Uh, most of the time, what we do, we we keep the higher digits um, on our side and we give the lower digits on their end. But for example, um, you provide your ISP this IP address and you would be keeping two dot one. 
So you basically um, end up doing this configuration and very important thing I would like to highlight here it would be um, this VR right because you'd be or we're connecting to multiple business partner one two three um, so on so right so you create a vrf to keep your routing separate for every business partner so i created a um, vrf called ext business partner one that's what i'm calling my business partner here right so i go configure this interface um create a vrf and bind that interface to this vrf here and assign the ip to stand out to the one slash 30 and you provide 10.2.2.2 slash 32 ISP that engineer sitting on the ISP side would do the same configuration do no shut and exit so once your uh, configuration is all set your um, networking engineer working on the ISP side is all set uh, you guys end up pinging to each other IP and see we have layer 3 connectivity right that's step 2 now step 3 would be um, so now that uh, you done connectivity connecting um, from your external switch or your router to the isp right you can ping across each other um, layer 2 and layer 3 is established now you need to you might already have a physical connection to you the firewall right so let me explain you the setup in your data center first um, so in this data center you have the external switch obviously which connects to the external network and um, behind that you would have a firewall which is a security device which is controlling all in and out traffic from external network and internal network going outside and behind that you would have a leaf switch compute switch um, compute switches and all and from there either you would be connecting to your esxi host your virtual environment or from there you would be running the another one links to your campus or your remote sites right say like uh, here you have a campus uh, location one and campus location two they, you could be having multiple networks for the sake of this um, video let's call um, this campus has a network for 5.5.5.24 .5 .5 and 6.6.27 and you would be advertising this to your leaf switch to towards your data centers and from that will that go so the the flow of the traffic would be anyone um wants to they say like a user sitting here wants to connect to the external network business partner one the traffic would go to the leaf switch on your data center and core switches from there to the firewall to the external switch and to the ISP and all the way to the external same thing on the your business partner of there could be more different ways how he has configured the network on the business partner side but let's say very similar to our network right that if a user B wants to go to the internet um, the traffic would still flow the same way based on the configuration to the leaf switch to the firewall and based on the policies and netting and all that um, that we will have that a sub completely separate video made in future i'll make a separate video in future natting and all from firewall to your external switch one and to the isp it could be the same isp or it could be different isp providing you internet service so that's how the flow of the traffic would be so let me clean this all all right so now that um your layer three is up you're able to ping across each other um network um, you create a VRF, you put this ethan to define that VRF external partner one, business partner one, this one, and you create a VLAN. I would be using a VLAN to connect uh, because th there could be few physical links, but you are again creating multiple VLANs to keep this uh, isolation separation of the traffic, right? So I would create a VLAN, layer two and layer three VLAN, let's call 4000, and put into the same VRF as I mentioned here. Um, create layer 2 layer 3 VLAN. Um, so um, let's forget about this one the VPN traffic let's just call the traffic towards PHA pair um, so it could be a PA it stands for Palo Alto or it could be your Cisco or any other uh, vendor right so um, you put that you put the description and you put the VLAN also in the VR forwarding so if you notice something here um, I put both interfaces. Let me highlight this a um, little bit. Ethernet 25 and the same VRF, and VLAN 4000 and the same VRF to keep the 
as to keep those the traffic coming from the business partner one in and out completely separate right if one in and out egress and egress um, ports right and then that's that's um, moving to your next step would be so I would be going up here or VRF business you also once you create a VRF, you also have to put this command. This is a very important command. Otherwise, the BGP would never come up. You have to enable um, routing on that particular VRF. IP routing VRF, EXT business partner one, right? That will enable the routing on that VRF. Now moving to the BGP configuration. Um, so I will go into the BGP configuration. I will call my ACE number 2000. Um, this will be from tier point external switch one to business partner. So basically you're not directly connected um, But you have this ISP as a middle layer. So logical configuration we're talking about right? So we'll call router BGP 2000 then this is also very important that you call this VRF because you're configuring the BGP for this VRF where you'd be connecting to business partner one Business um, so we are EXT to business partner one EXT stands for external then you call the neighbor statements right here on 10.2.2 who's 10.2.2 the isp your isp peer ip address 2.2.2 remote area 65 6500 uh, make sure you you have this as number proper in place then you put the description i highly recommend putting the description because during the troubleshooting um this descriptions play a very important role and then you call this soft re, uh, soft reconfiguration in ball um so help um so what this does is like um, say during a troubleshooting right if I do show IP BGP neighbor um, 10.2.2.2 we are um, received routes or advertised route I would be able to see that so I, I believe you guys understand the difference between received routes on just routes in the BGP command right so you would be able to see those details right at least for the receive receive routes it's nothing but the routes which you have received over this one link and um, routes command would show you what you have accepted using a prefix list or access list so i would do the same thing continuation uh, remote area 6700 my 6700 is for the uh, my firewall so now that I'm done configuring the BGP between ISP and your interface ET25, now I have to create a BGP from between your external switch and the firewall and the VRF, right? So this is a continuation, neighbor, blah, 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 remote 67, description again, it's very important. Then I would do the save, uh, soft reconfiguration on all. Right, now that this is done, so how I would be controlling the traffic, right? When I say controlling means whatever I'm receiving. So your ISP might be giving tons of routes, right? And you don't want to install all those routes in your routing table. So what you do, you create a route map inbound for any traffic coming in. Let me clean this a little bit. So, so like if your ISP giving you 10 routes, for example, 20 routes, you don't want all those 20 routes, you only want five of them right or two of them so you receive that either you, your ISP would can block it or you can block it to your end so you create a route map here on the switch and you only access those two routes out of ten so like you're receiving ten routes and you only want to accept two routes so you can do that by route map so this is what I'm doing here so I'm creating a route map business partner one out deny ten why well, I'm putting deny ten because so this is only pre-staging right how i do is first i bring everything up as a pre-staging and see i'm receiving all the routes and everything then during the cutover i um go when i had time to go live i enable the bgp accept everything in in and out and <clears throat> do a cutover so for pre-staging that's the reason why i don't want to cause any outage in bgp or any issues until we know that everything is fine that's why i'm putting deny that means i'm stopping everything here on the switch all the routes coming i'm stopping here and anything which i want to advertise i'm keeping it ready and stopping it here during the cutover what i would do when i say permit permit on both inbound and outbound route maps i would be sending and receiving completely otherwise i mean for now i'm just holding it here i am keeping everything ready basically that's the purpose of putting the deny statement then on external switch one for outgoing one create a prefix list so what is the prefix list people also use i um 
what shall I call it, um, the access list, right? So I want to advertise these two routes for campus one and campus two, five five dot five six six dot six is right. So I would go, I would call the IP prefix list with this name, business partner one out prefix. That means I'm advertising out, right? Um, so this is what I would do. You don't need to call this this statement. I would go IP prefix list business partner out prefixes. 5.5.5 five dot five dot five slash 24 this one and 6.6 dot six. these will be one I would be advertising from my campus one campus two to the um, data centers from there to the business partner right then I would create another roadmap like I said if you're receiving 10 routes here but you only want to advertise two of them which is useful for your network so I would be creating a roadmap in. When I say in, we're talking about this. When we're talking about out, we're talking about this. Giving out, right? So I would create a IP prefix list inbound permit 10 match. Oh, sorry, um, this one. So, so like you only need this two networks, so 30.30.30.30 and 20.20.20.20 and slash 16. So I would Put this here those ips and make sure you are using the correct subnet mask here slash 26 or slash you confirm with this with your isp and all here this is also very important whatever the network range you want to advertise you're advertising if say like you want to advertise everything you want to be a specific route slash 32 you can also do that then i would go into the roadmap which i put on deny here on the top this one roadmap business partner and i would call this prefix list in prefixes right for accepting the routes from your business partner right and I'm saying permit 10 so this will override the deny statement or you can say it, um, permit 20 and um, the same thing I did here roadmap business partner out giving advertising to the business partner and I'm calling this IP prefix list which I just created here for advertising Right now, once you're done with that, then you do a show IP BGP summary, um, VRF all, or just say VRF, whatever the VRF you created here, it will show you the number of routes you have received, number of um, routes you have being installed on your routing table. Or you could also do a show IP BGP neighbor, so on, so IP address, advertised route to confirm you're advertising these both um, networks. So now that your BGP is up, you're able to send and receive, uh, you have accessibility from tier point, from your data center to your external business partner, everything is good now, you want to advertise the same thing. Um, now that all these networks, right, um, this one, this guy, let's put this here under this one for the sake of this video. Say so now that we are able to get this route from external network through ISP to your external switch and the firewall and the leaf switch now till here is everything good now you want to pass on this route to your campus one and campus two so you might be having the similar configuration right on from the bgp on your campus and campus two WAN links so what you do is you create another roadmap there um, on your leaf switches here ip prefix list business partner one we call the name to keep so that you, for the sake of understanding you call those IP subnets here again, and you you might have a route map for that particular locations, right? Um, then match IP prefix list, and um, yep, that would take care. That will add um, you basically go to the route map what you might have existing to control the route between your campus and campus two. You create a um, prefix list and call the prefix list in the same route map exactly like how we did here. So that will take care. I know um, there is more we can talk about, much we can go from further details on this video, but I believe um, this is um, best I can do for in terms of explanation. And um, so yeah, don't forget to um, leave a comment. If you like this video, press the thumb icon and please subscribe. Thank you.